This is a reading of The Fourth Girl, written by Subhadra Sen Gupta, read by Prerna. A mother refusing to feed her newborn child, it was something Parvati Bai had never heard before. She stood there in the kitchen holding a half clean thali in her hand, turned into stillness. Then she raised her head to listen and in the early morning silence she heard the familiar thin wailing cry of a hungry baby and knew it was true. When Parvati Bai had come to work that morning, she had noticed absently that the house was oddly quiet but had not thought much about it. There was work to do. So as always, she had gone swiftly into the kitchen where a huge pile of dirty dishes, pots and pans waited for her in the sink. She had just begun her scrubbing when the cook had come in and said, It's another daughter. She's been crying all night. Still scrubbing away, Parvati shook her head sadly. The fourth, poor woman. Now that mother-in-law of hers will not let her live in peace. The cook cleared his throat, preparing to give the momentous news for which the earlier information was just preliminary. She is refusing to feed the baby. Refusing? Who? Parvati turned to stare at the cook's thick, unshaven face, the small eyes glittering with excitement. The baby is lying there, crying, and she is not even willing to pick it up. By then, with a brisk twist of her wrist, Parvati had opened the tap washed her hands and was marching out of the kitchen. The cook's word were not enough. This was something she had to see for herself. Parvati had worked as a maid at this house from the day she came to Delhi as a 16-year-old bride of the family driver. And as her husband also repaired the cars, he was given a small room over the garage to live. Here, Parvati had raised three children. The two daughters were now married, just the son remained. After 24 years, Parvati knew the ins and outs of the big house and its people very well. The head of the family, Bhagwan Das, owned a jewellery shop in Chandani Chowk, and the family mentioned was always bustling with relatives and friends. Parvati had watched the only son being married to a beautiful daughter of a sari shop owner, then held in carrying in the immense dowry that had accompanied the bride. While some were marvelling at how things always fell neatly into place for Bhagwan Das' family. Then the balance of fate that Parvati so implicitly believed in had asserted itself and the daughter-in-law had given birth to three daughters in six years. And the complacent smiles had vanished from faces of Bhagwan Das's clan. Watching the anger and resentment that flared up often between the women, the gloom among the men, Parvati had thought grimly, it's always money, that's all they can think about. If there was no son to carry on the line, Bhagwan Das's money would be scattered among relatives and that was a thought that the father and the son couldn't bear. Crossing the central courtyard, Parvati moved swiftly up the staircase thinking worriedly. I'm sure the cook's mistaken. How can she refuse to feed her own child? Then as she reached the first floor where the son and the daughter-in-law live, the crying of the baby got louder. Panting slightly, she reached the room and came to a halt at the door, pushing back the curtain. She looked into the scene inside and drew her breath in shock and surprise. Radha, the daughter-in-law, lay in a day stupor on the bed, her face swollen after hours of crying, and as if making a deliberate statement of rejection, she had turned her back on the swaddled baby that lay abandoned like a forgotten bundle at one corner of the large double bed. In defiance of the uncaring back, an anguished wail rose from the bundle, and as Parvati listened, she thought the crying was getting weaker. At the other end of the room, the mother-in-law, Bhagwan Das's wife, stood staring stonily out of the window. Both the women in the room seemed completely unaware of the famished, crying child. With a small exclamation of protest at the horror she saw, Parvati went swiftly up to the bed and reaching down, picked up the child. She looked down at Radha. This child is dying. Aren't you going to feed it, Bahu? There was no reaction from the stiffly prostrate figure on the bed. While the woman by the window turned to look at Parvati, her eyes empty of feelings. The baby against her breast was hiccuping into an exhausted silence as Parvati left the room. Neither of the women tried to stop her, though both of them watched her go. Minnie, the fourth girl, began her life by nearly dying. Minnie left because Parvati Bai took her up to the room over the garage carrying a bowl of milk from the kitchen, while her teenage son went running to the market to get a feeding bottle. Minnie continued to live because Parvati hunted through her trunk for her children's old clothes and put them on her. Minnie survived because whenever she fell ill, Parvati's husband would rush to get a doctor. 
Vinny learned to smile when he got her a rattle. And she learned to love because Parvati son carried her around with him like a favorite toy and paced up and down with her in his arms when she cried at night. Minnie, the fourth girl, if there is a god, then he sent her into the world with every disadvantage you could think of. It was the kind of creative cruelty that the omnipotent often exhibits, especially towards little girls. Minnie's mother was fair and exquisitely beautiful, but she was born with her father's dark skin and plain looks. If she had been a cuddly pretty baby, maybe her mother would have relented. But for the mother of her four unwelcome daughters, there was nothing to warm up into the thin, dark, squalling baby with huge, accusing eyes. Parvati had taken the baby back to the house the next day and waited beside bed. Radha turned away and said briefly, Take her away. Parvati, a practical woman, had argued bringing up a child costs money. Radha dropped the cupboard keys into Parvati's hand without a word. That became the ritual every month. Parvati would go and hold out her hand. Radha would give her the keys and she would take the money she needed for Mini. Radha never asked how her fourth daughter was and Parvati never offered to tell her. Precautious as she was, Mini spoke her first word when she was a year old. She lisped Ma on Parvati's lap and Parvati lugged her close and said, No, Munia, call me Amma. I am Amma. And then she picked up the child and carried her to the first floor to try one more time. Radha, sitting before the mirror, had turned with an irritated frown and said, Why have you brought her here? Unaffected by her anger, Parvati said quietly, Munia said the first word today. So, don't you want to know what she said? What? Ma, she was calling you. Yes, but I'll teach her to call me Amma. My children call me that. Anything you wish. Minnie grew up in a misty place between the garage room and the big house. No one ever kept her away from the house, but instinctively she knew it was not her home. Her three sisters tolerantly allowed her to play with them, but at mealtimes she would sit beside Parvati in the kitchen to eat. And at night she would follow Parvati up to the room above the garage. When Minnie was three, she studied everything with her large, ever watchful eyes and with an instinctive awareness, she knew there were things that she was allowed to do and others she was not. She could play in the courtyard but never enter the large room where the men sat. If that old woman ever beckoned her closer, she had to stay quietly docile and not jump into her lap. She could enter all the bedroom except the large one on the first floor where this fair, beautiful woman lived. Because that woman would look at her with a pair of icy eyes and say, Go to Parvati, and Minnie was afraid of her. Minnie knew her sisters felt the same. Minnie called Parvati Amma and her husband Babuji. She knew in a confused way that the three older girls were her sisters because they told her to call them Didi, but her one and only beloved Baya was Parvati's son. They all called her Minnie except her Amma and Babuji who called her Munia. Like the pretty perky little bird. From her didis, she learned to call Bhagwan Das and his wife Dadaji and Dadaji, but the problem began with the other two in the big house. There was the fair woman and her dark husband who were Amma and Babuji to her sisters, but Minnie already had an Amma and Babuji, and they lived over the garage. So with quiet acceptance, she called them nothing. It simplified things a bit. Everything became confused again when Minnie was six, and she learned that the fair woman on the first floor had given birth to a son. Minnie sat at the kitchen door chewing a piece of mango achar and watched the sudden urge of excitement around the house. The boxes of sweets arriving, the women coming to visit with big smiles. Her grandmother stood at the door giving food to the beggars. There were garlands at the door, rangoli on the floor, and in the large room her grandfather and the dark men sat grinning like heroes. Minnie did not understand what was happening, so she went to ask Parvati. In the kitchen, Parvati was grinding spices and looked up as Minnie went and leaned against her shoulder. Hungry, Munia? No, Amma. Why are they feeding the beggars today? Because a boy has been born. A grandson for Dadaji. You give sweets only for boys? Yes. Minnie sucked the mango slice some more and then asked, It's the son of the dark man. Yes. And who is the mother? That fair woman on the first floor. Oh, Minnie was beginning to understand. My three Didi's mother. Parvati laid down the grinding stone, turned to pull Minnie into her lap and said gently, You are also her daughter. Whose? Minnie's huge dark eyes widened in surprise. Radha's, the fair woman's. I'm not your daughter, Amma? The eyes were beginning to cloud with doubt. Parvati swallowed to catch her throat. Yes, you are, but she gave birth to you. 
like she did to your sisters. But, but I like you so much, I took you and made you my own special daughter. Minnie wriggled deeper into Parvati's capacious, soft cushioned lap, a smile glimmered around her lips. You chose me? Yes, I looked at your didis and then at you and I said I want her. She's my bunia. And then? And then I took you home and kissed you and gave you lots of milk to drink. Didn't she that when he struggled to find a name for Radha? Didn't my Didi's mother cry when you took me away? She had three daughters, but I'm sure she cried a bit. Mini sat silent, head bent playing with Parvati's sari. Munia, Parvati whispered anxiously. Then a soft six-year-old face turned up to look at her, the lips widening into a delighted smile. Oh, good, good, you chose me, Amma. I'm scared of her. So are my Didi's. I would never want to call her Amma. If Parvati had tears in her eyes, she hid them by bending to go on grinding the spices. As Minnie ran out to get a handful of sweets from her grandmother, her smiling Dadaji who was feeding the beggars that day. Minnie was taught her next lesson of life when she was 10 and her little brother was 4. She and her sisters were waiting at the gate for the cycle rickshaws in which they went to school. Just then the family car drove out past them at the back, Minnie caught a glimpse of the fair woman and her plump fair son. Minnie's eldest sisters laughed. Do you know where Amma is taking him? To that big convent school. Minnie looked at her with a puzzled frown, sensing the bitterness behind her words but not discovering the reason. To a convent school, her sister repeated, We go to the local government school in rickshaw. He will go in the car. The second sister clambering into the rickshaw said, At least we go to school. Amma didn't want Minnie to study at all until Parvati got angry. As they trundled down the road, watching the sweating back of the rickshaw wala, Minnie digested that bit of information and then asked, She didn't? But why? Because Amma said you are only fit to be like Parvati working in the kitchen. But Parvati heard about it and she went and yelled at Amma. Yelled what? That she should go and tell the world what Amma did to you. What did she do? Give you to Parvati to bring up. Why did she do that? Because you are the fourth girl and you are so dark. All day at school, Minnie puzzled over her sister's words, wondering absently at why the tears kept coming to her eyes. Why did it matter what the fair woman said? Minnie didn't even like her, after all. Coming home, she went in search of the wisest person she knew, her Babuji. He would be able to answer her questions. She found him in the garage, fiddling with the engine of a car, and as always, he smiled at her and said, Munya, how was the Hindi exam? Good. Only one girl got more marks than me. I'll beat her next time. Hand me the spanner. Minnie gave him the spanner. Then bending her head to one side, just like a Munya bird, she said, Babuji, is it bad to be the fourth girl? Fourth? I thought you stood second in class. No, no, I mean being the fourth daughter. Is that why the fair lady does not like me? Didi said so. Parvati's husband laid down the spanner, closed the lid of the engine and pulled Minnie closer with a grease-darkened hand. She may not have liked you, but we did. But I'm your third daughter, Minnie protested. You are our best daughter, the smartest, the prettiest, and my favorite. But I'm dark. All my sisters are fair. The man searched desperately in his mind for an answer to a question for which there were no kind answers. He couldn't tell the child. You are a dark girl, dark and plain and the fourth daughter. That's all they see. Not that pair of bright, intelligent eyes, that quick mind, that chatter and laughter. My gallant little Munia bird, the world never bothers to look within a fourth girl like you. Tell me something, he said briskly. Last night I was telling you about the most powerful goddess of all. Who's that? Kali. Right, and isn't Kali dark? She is so strong and clever, she stands on Shiva's chest and she can kill demons. Minnie wrinkled, half convinced. Yes, but she is very scary looking. Okay, what about Lata Mangeshkar? She's dark and the best singer in the country. Mm. Minnie was still wrinkling her nose. And Bahida Rahman, he said triumphantly, convinced he had finally found the right name. Oh, is she dark too? Minnie's eyes were shining with delight. But she's so beautiful. Right, said Minnie's Bauji, opening the engine lid again. And you also have brains. Right, said Minnie. And as his trained assistant, she slapped the spanner into his hand. Next morning, when the car drove past their cycle rickshaw, Minnie waved to her brother, and he, like the well-fed here to the kingdom, kindly waved back. Minnie's eldest sister laughed. By the time Minnie completed her fifth year, she understood everything. She stood quietly at one side watching, and there was something in her large eyes that Radha could not bear. 
she made it clear that minnie was to stay away from her and as an excuse she announced to the world that minnie brought her bad luck but minnie would not take her orders any more she had realized that whatever the elders of the family may say about her in her absence none of them could look her in the eyes and reject her with quiet voice minnie would join her sisters to welcome the guest in the house and often see the startled glance they gave her there were people who had till then believed her to be parvati's daughter minnie's two elder sisters were married on the same day and with quiet composure minnie stood with the family helped at the wedding band up and laughed and giggled with other girls then when the family group was being photographed she walked up with the rest to the stand beside one of the brides as if unaware of radha's icy stare in the photograph there were two unsmiling faces radha's and her fourth daughters minnie had discovered early that every time anyone tried to hurt her she could hit back with the whiplash of words that were more devastating then she realized that with her sharp tongue she also had another weapon of defense what her bauji had called her brains with a desperate determination she looked for her salvation in her studies and parvati and her husband stood behind her not totally understanding her compulsions but anyway always ready to support when the school leaving exam result came out the family set up and noticed minnie she had topped amongst the girls as the family watched in amazement newspaper reporters came to interview her and photographers clicked her pictures as always minnie sat poised and quiet as the reporters scribbled then one man asked i'm sure your parents must be very proud of you Minnie turned her huge glittering eyes towards Parvati standing by the door smiling. She said softly, "Yes, they are very very proud." Next morning for the first time in her life, Minnie was summoned into the men's sitting room where the dark man she resembled so much sat with the newspaper spread before him. In every one of them there was Minnie's smiling photograph. The dark man had hardly ever spoken to her in the past 16 years except to ask her a few times if she needed anything. He looked embarrassed now before the girl standing so patiently in front of him. He nervously cleared his throat and said, "You have done well, Minnie." Minnie stood still and waited. And um, what will you do next? Study medicine, Minnie said firmly. Medicine? The man looked scandalized. But no daughter of ours. I don't know if your mother. Minnie stayed silent. The dark man held out a hundred rupee note toward her. She took it with a cool thank you and left the room. Then, preparing for the battle she knew would follow, she told Parvati about her plans. Parvati and Minnie were called into the first floor bedroom where Radha and her husband waited. Minnie was ordered to stay at home and learn to cook and sew until a suitable boy was found for her. They had expected Parvati to protest, but it was Minnie who spoke up. Suppose your son had done well, would you ask him to stay at home? A little surprised at Minnie's overt rebellion, Radha turned to look at her fourth daughter. You are not my son. True, your son fails at least once in every class. Radha turned away with a dismissing wave of her hand. You'll do what we decide for you. Then, as Parvati watched in surprise, Minnie went up to stand close to Radha, sitting on her bed, and said, "I have got a scholarship. You don't have to pay for anything. No daughter of mine will." Minnie bent down to look straight into Radha's eyes, and there was something in her face that made Radha flinch away. But I'm not your daughter. Mothers feed and care for their children. When have you fed or cared for me? Ratha's husband moved in hurriedly trying to save the battle already lost. Yes, fine, do whatever you like, just leave us alone. Mini didn't bother to reply. Before Mini left the room, she paused at the door and looked back at her parents. In her father's eyes there was the anger of a thwarted male head of the house. In her mother's face she seemed to see an odd puzzled interest, as if for the first time Ratha had really noticed her fourth daughter. Through the long hard years of study at the medical college Minnie came home for the holidays and spent most of her time in the room over the garage or chattering with Parvati in the kitchen she never went up to the first floor because of her infrequent visits she noticed changes in the family before the others did the house was emptier now her grandparents were dead and so was one sister the other two rarely came to visit now minnie was allowed to have a small room in the big house She sensed things were not going well for the family. The dark man and the son and heir spent more time battling each other than earning money, and Radha did not know how to control a son who had discovered the dubious pleasure of gambling, alcohol, and women. When Minnie came back to stay in the big house, she was an intern at the local hospital. On holidays, she would wander around the house, noticing how quiet it had all become. 
No more bustle of relatives at festival, the movements of servants, chatter and gossip. Now half the room stayed locked and there was only one old car in the garage. Parvati's husband spent most of his time pottering in the kitchen garden. Radha had begun to fall ill and once a week Minnie would climb the stairs to the first floor and go check her blood pressure. And every time she would notice the puzzled question in Radha's eyes. At time Minnie thought she would tell her mother, don't be surprised. I am a doctor. I have taken a vow to treat the ill. And that includes mothers who abandon their daughters to die. But Minnie being Minnie was brisk, businesslike and silent. Even the dark men spoke to her now in a helpless reaching out for support. She helped him with his financial dealings, ran errands to the bank and even found ways to pay off the gambling debts of the son and heir. In his eyes too, at times she saw the baffled regret that she had so desperately waited to see when she was a young girl. But now she did not encourage any personal conversation and the dark man, oddly afraid of her, never gathered the courage to say anything. Even now on some nights after working late, Minnie would creep up the stairs to the room over the garage to cuddle up to Parvati and whisper and giggle into her ears. She would dig and prune with her Babuji in the kitchen garden and tell him all the news. And when her bhaiya who was in the army wrote to her, Minnie would carry his letter around in her purse like a talisman of joy. Only with the family that chose her, Minnie, Munia would chatter, laugh and be young again. It was the same year that both the son and the heir of the clan and the fourth daughter got married. Minnie married a classmate. He married the best dowry he could find. The only condition of the deal was that he would go and stay in the bride's home as her parents did not want to let go of their only child. The son and the heir happily agreed. As Radha and her husband watched helplessly, he packed his bags, got into his sports car, waved goodbye and vanished in a cloud of dust. Minnie's first child was a boy. She and her husband came to the big house straight from the hospital. While getting out of the taxi carrying her son, Minnie's eyes widened in surprise. There was a reception committee waiting for her. There were garlands on the door, rangoli on the floor, and she seemed to see the ghost of her grandmother feeding the beggars. Radha, her biological mother, and the dark men, her biological father, stood at the door with wide smiles, ready to welcome their biological grandson. Behind them, their faces incandescent with joy, stood Parvati and her husband. Minnie walked slowly up to the stairs to the main door. Radha had come forward, her arms outstretched in welcome. Minnie smiled and said softly, Amma, Babuji, your grandson. Then walking past the fair woman and the dark man she had never called anything, Munia Minnie laid her son in the welcoming arms of her real mother. Thank you for listening.